Hi, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop. And this video is for Greg. Now, you're going to know which Greg I'm talking about because he made a comment and I'm going to try it to see if it works any better. Today we're going to install boots on my father-in-law's snapper. Now I ordered these off of Amazon and these came right from, I kind of ruined the bag here, Briggs and Stratton. You can see on the top of the bag. The part number is 70, 75, 11, 5, YP. And it's titled Axle, well I should say it's titled Boot Axle. They always put it backwards. But these are the very nice rubber ones. They're not the cheap grayish white plastic like you're going to see that's on this thing that break and crack when they get old. These are very nice real rubber boots. These are the ones you want to get a hold of. And we're going to put them on. The only thing I don't like about these boots, outside of this bag, <laughs> it can't rip. <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> Is on the front here, it's got uh, the description, it's got the part number, and then it says made in China. I could have done totally without that. But they are, or they seem to be, extremely nice. So let's see if we can get them on. There's a couple things on this machine I want to point out to you that you may want to buy to put on yours if you don't have a lip seal on the left hand side of your rear case or main case on your fender to keep the dirt out of your bushing. This one has a factory seal on it. I didn't know they sold them for that side. That's why I made my own to put on my model with a three quarter inch lip seal in it. And uh, this one came factory with one on it because originally it was just a hard plastic. I don't even know if I kept the old one. It was just a hard plastic cover that went on, slid on the part of the bushing that stuck out and you put a clamp around it. And that was supposed to keep the dirt out. Well, it never sealed very good. Dirt got in there and it destroyed the bushing and the axle. When sand gets into a joint like that, it embeds itself in the softest material, which is the bushing. Then it acts as a grinding stone. So as that sand is embedded in your bushing and your axle is turning, it grinds your axle and it destroys both of them at the same time. So let me try to drop this camera down and we're going to take this apart. I don't know if I'm going to put it back together or not. Uh, my spreader bar is bent. If I can't straighten that out to make me happy, I'm going to make a new spreader bar at work. So we'll see how far we get with it. But I did have a viewer ask me how do you get the tapered bolt out of the wheel flange I got the nut off but the bolt will not come out I've never had too much problems with that as I've said in other videos I'm a gadget guy I make tools and gadgets for about everything I need to do and this is one I made for pressing them bolts out when they're stuck in there. It's just a piece of pipe, goes over the axle, the bottom sticks through this hole, you tighten this bolt up and it presses it out. Well, everybody don't have one of these. So I'm going to show you another way to do it that's safe so you don't destroy your bearing by pounding on this or you don't bend your axle. So let's drop over here and we'll get to it. 
Okay, this is a bolt in a wheel flange that I cannot get out. It is really wedged in there. Why they use them taper bolts, I'm not really sure. But what we're going to do, down below here on the floor, I have a stack of, let me tip you down, of very dense material that's going to hopefully not absorb the impact that I want to put into this bolt. Now I don't really want to just beat on this because I could either bend my axle or I could destroy this bushing. Or if you have bearings in your machine you will definitely destroy your bearings. You want to support this. So I just got a cheap little hydraulic jack that I've had for probably 45 years. I bought this years and years ago. And we're going to jack this up and put it right under that wheel flange. Now I'm going to give this a little extra pump to make sure I'm actually going to lift this machine a little bit. To make sure I got all the weight on this jack. Now when I hit this, hopefully all the shock that I'm putting into this is going to go into this bolt. I've got the nut back on there, flush with the top of the bolt. That way I'm going to be hitting both of them. Hopefully I won't destroy the threads. Chances are I probably will and I'll have to replace this bolt. But let's give it a shot and see what happens. And that is definitely stuck. That one did it. Now we can get this thing out of my way. And now we're going to need a pair of pliers and a wrench to get that off. Because I would imagine them threads are probably not in real good shape right now. It is screwing off. Get it out the rest of the way. I have never had one that give me this much trouble. And by golly, the threads look pretty darn good. Maybe we can actually reuse that. Now, the next question is the wheel flange going to come off or is that froze up? I guess I'm going to have to get my wheel puller out to get that off. Okay, I got my wheel puller out and put together. Now you'll notice most all wheel pullers on your threaded shaft that actually does the pushing, if you look at it close enough, you see they have a point on the end of them. Without that point, when you go to push on something, the shaft will walk around. Kind of like when you try to drill a hole with a drill and you don't use a center punch. Now you can either drill a small hole in the end of this shaft or I just make up a part like this. It's just a small piece of steel with a center hole in it big enough to totally clear the point because you want to push with this flat surface not with the point. So that clears it and it fits tight. It has to be small enough to fit through the wheel flange. You don't want to press this in there and get that stuck. Now they used to make pullers for pulling these. They don't make them anymore. I do have some pictures that shows them pretty clearly. I'm going to make some up so I don't have to use this bunglesome thing. You put your wheel puller on, you want to put it on the flat spot. Don't put it out here on the corners. I did show that once 
but that flange wasn't stuck real bad. Otherwise, if you pull from these corners where the holes are, you could bend your wheel flange. Then your tire's going to wobble when you drive across your yard. So let's get this little bar in here. And I dropped it. Some of these jobs are really meant for two people, especially these things. Once you get them on and the screw tightened up, they're not too bad. So let's see if we can get this off. Boy, it is tough. But it is moving. There we go. I was beginning to wonder there for a minute what was going to happen. And it's dry and rusty underneath. When you put these things back on, smear them up really good with some anti-seize. Because 10 years or 11 years down the road, when you do this again, you're really going to thank yourself. Glad that one came off. Now I have to replace both boots and I'm going to pull this machine back in the center of this platform. I had it way over to one side so I could get the jack underneath the wheel flange, but I <laughs> really want to keep it centered between the wheels so this thing don't tip over on me. Now to get these boots out and as you can see let me move some of this stuff get these boards out of here now you can see these has the cheap grayish white plastic boots and things are really cheap now this machine has I can find a screwdriver now this was a cheap plastic cover I was talking about that was on my original snapper before I put the dust cap and seal on the right hand side and this one I didn't know they came out with or I would have just bought it from them I went around and bought my own we're gonna take this off or I should say I went out and made my own I'm gonna clean some of that rust off of there Actually, I'm going to spray some WD-40 on that rusty shaft. Because I don't want to hurt my lip seal when I pull it off. And that is full of some grease that's all dried up. Which tells me that somebody actually greased the bushing on this side of the machine because it oozed out and got into the cap. Somebody actually taking care of this machine like they should. We'll take that old grease out. Get that out of the way. And this is the plastic or rubber cap. It has a three-quarter inch hole in it instead of the large hole on this side. And it has a lip seal down in there. This is excellent for keeping the sand out of this bushing. 
or a bearing depending on what you have on your machine. And there is there is no slop in that bushing. So I don't have to replace that. Okay, now we're going to spin this around and take off the right hand side. Now there's two different ways you can do this. It's just whatever you think is easier. You can take off the right hand fender and then you have to take the chain case off which before you can do that you have to take the yoke off because the tail and the chain case goes into the yoke and that's how it shifts and you have to take the cables off and the linkage off if you take this side off which is the same amount of bolts to take this side off you can just pull this whole thing out and the chain case will stay there put your two boots in and slide, slide this right back in it's a lot quicker and probably a little easier. So I'm going to use an air ratchet, so turn your volume down and we'll take these bolts out. You got five bolts and they are, I believe, 9 16 Better check to make sure. No, I'm wrong. They're half inch. And then you have one bolt and nut that you have to take out. So let's pull these off of here. have to have a half inch wrench to hold that nut which I lost down in here oh, here it is that holds the bracket that supports the back of the mower deck and I lied there is six bolts I thought there was should be able to just, no not yet, we've got our spreader bar we have to take off and I'm going to take this completely out because I want to try and straighten it. And the only way you can get that spreader bar out is if you take one of the fenders off. So it's a good time to do it right now. throw that over in a vise and straighten that out the best we can. Now we should be able to just pull this right out of here. Once I take the boot loose, don't you hate it when you forget to do one little thing? take the shims off that side. Might as well pull this boot off right now. So we're going to throw that in a garbage anyway. Take the rest of the shims off and 
this is coming out hard because it's got so much grit stuck on it from that ripped boot. Okay, now we got the shims out of there. I see why it's not wanting to pull out. Set this up here. Somehow. Maybe we'll have to stick it back in. That hole. I have a burr on the end of this shaft. Get this thing back in here. That I'm going to have to file off. And this burr is, some of it is what's caused my side play issues. So, I've got to go grab a file and file that off. Okay, we got that file off. Now, the burrs on the end of the hexagon shaft, underneath where the steel thrust washer snaps into with the little teeth that stick up, this is telling me that whoever owned this machine mowed on a hill. And this is what happens when you mow on a hill and you mow with the hill. So your machine is tipped. You have all that thrust up against either this bushing or this bushing, depending which way is downhill. If at all possible, you're much better off to mow up the hill and down the hill. Don't try to mow on the side of the hill. Well, for one thing, you could roll your tractor over if the hill is steep enough. Well, we got them filed off. And your, your hexagon tube has play back and forth. That's why you put all these little plastic shims in. So before you start filing on that, pull the hexagon tube out. Then when you're done, shove it back in and make sure you get all the filings off of that axle. You don't want them working their way into your bushing. That will ruin it. So let's see if this thing will pull out of here now. Oh, much better. Now, if you use, you walk over here in front of you, if you use one of your tires, it makes a real good stand to hold that thing up. And if you got enough muscle, you don't really need to take that tire off. Just pull the whole thing out and set it on the floor. Now we're going to take these crappy boots off and put the good ones on. Greg told me this job would go easier if I tried out what he mentioned to me. And I guess at the end of the video, I'll tell everybody what his plan was. But I'm sure if you've watched many of my videos at all, you will know what I'm talking about already. down in there where it belongs and we can put this boot on yeah these are much nicer than them plastic ones 
And like I said, I got these off Amazon Prime with no shipping. And that wasn't me. The uh, secretary I have at the shop, she does all this computer stuff for me because it's just way over my head. Now, before I put this back together, I want to try and, you can see this, <laughs> I want to try and straighten this. Now, this is really important to keep straight because it's a spreader and it goes between the two fenders at the bottom of your machine. And it kind of protects the drivetrain from stuff you run over. But if you use one of these that it's bent, what it's going to do is it's going to pull the two fenders in and it's going to put a strain on the bushings and all that's going to do is it's going to wear your bushings out even faster. So if you notice this thing is bent, straighten it right away. It is really important to keep that straight. Okay, that didn't take any time at all. Less than a minute to straighten this thing out. So we're going to put this side back on. We're going to leave it loose because if everything's tight, it's going to be kind of hard to slide that back through there and get it where I want it. Okay, now Greg told me this job was going to go easier and at the end of the video, I guess I'll show you what his idea was and uh, I'm not sure if it made it go easier or not, but I'll let you guys decide. Get that to slide through there. Get that clamp back on just fell off on me. Now we'll get the uh, hexagon thrust washer back inside of the shaft and we had looks like originally they had two and I put on three. So for right now we'll put them back in and see if it really needs it or if we have to take some out. Get this thing wiggled back into shape here. My linkage came out of this spreader bar up here me a little bit of trouble. Now what I want to do is make sure that thrust washer is snapped into the hexagon shaft the way it's supposed to be and we'll shove it back together. And now all that's left to do is put the bolts back in. Get that spreader bar in there where it belongs. And get these bolts started. Now you want to make sure you get all these started first before you tighten any of them up. linkage in there. Now the nut and the bolt goes on there. Nut go 
those on the inside. And the other self-tapping bolt that they use on these things goes in the top. And you want to make sure you get them started straight, otherwise they will cut new threads. And that won't do you much good, because it will make the thread strip out faster. If every time you put these in, they want to cut new threads. I guess I'll take that back off, because this doesn't want to go in for some reason. Yes. There. Now I can put the bolt and the nut back in. And we can tighten all this up. Now turn your volume back down. I had a misfire there. We'll tighten this stuff up. them tight but I'm not sure how much strength that thing has so I want to tighten them by hand and I know how much I can put into them really that's too bad. I want to make sure these are tight. And that being a self-locking nut, it will hold itself while you tighten up the bolt. Now that one's tight. Now we'll go over here and tighten this side up. <clears throat> well, we'll see how much side play we have now. care of all my side play and the only things left to do is to tighten up these last two clamps and put the other ends on just make sure your boot goes all the way on Because it's hard to tell that clamp in your way if you've got it all the way up there where you really want it. And sometimes it helps. If you shift your chain case back and forth, it gives you a little less stretching to do. Now, one of my viewers has told me that the reason they have this slot in the outside of your fender right here 
That is so you can get your screwdriver in and tighten up that clamp. Now let's hit fifth gear and see if this boot stretches all the way. Nice. And it even still has a little more stretch to it. It's not stretched to its maximum length. You will notice when you go to buy these, they don't sell what they do with that old one. They don't sell this style anymore with the extended end. Um, see, this thing had a lot of holes in it. A lot more than I thought. That's probably how all the dirt got in there. So, that's it. Now, I did off camera, I should have shown that, wiped off that hexagon shaft and got all the crud off it. But I forgot to show that part. That's right after I got done filing it. So this part is done. I can put the wheel flange back on, put the tires back on, I have to lay it down and I have to take the carburetor off and clean it. But that's in the next video. That's it. It didn't take too awfully long. A little over half an hour. Uh, a lot of that was filming time and moving a camera. If you had to do this on your own, probably 20, 25 minutes you ought to have it done. So, if you're a subscriber and you watch all my videos you probably notice a small difference in this video and I had a viewer from down south I don't know Georgia one of them really cool states his name is Greg and he told me that if I drank a coke while I was working on a snapper it would go better because Cokes are red and so are snappers. <laughs> Pepsis are blue and I guess I'd have to work on a Ford tractor to get that ratio out right. I can't really say it worked out any better because of the Coke. And you do notice that I have a vanilla Coke. Makes it taste a lot. <laughs> It makes it taste a little bit better. <laughs> Sorry, Gary. <laughs> Coke's just not as sweet as Pepsi. I'm just a... <laughs> I was going to say I'm a sweet guy, but <laughs> that just ain't... <laughs> Nobody's going to believe that. I'm a big sourpuss, and I need the sugar. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe in the future, I'll try this experiment again. So if a future video you notice a red bottle instead of a blue bottle, you'll know why. It's Gary's fault. <laughs> so until next time, work safe, have fun, and have yourself a cold one. Coke, Pepsi, hey, what's the difference? <laughs> well, now I know one's red, one's blue. We'll talk to you soon.